Hello world, Lisa Fredrickson, your friend and computer science professor with another short screencast about access. And this time I'm going to try and wrap up our discussion about access forms by just giving you some miscellaneous tips that I think are very important. When we go into design view, we see a lot of controls that we haven't discussed in this playlist. And that's because they are much more rarely used. The key controls that you must know and appreciate are the text box, label, combo box, option group, option buttons, ones we've already discussed in this playlist. If you see these other controls, yes, you may use them on a rare occasion, but if you understand what we've talked about in this playlist so far, you'll be able to teach yourself the rare times when you maybe need a tab control or a page break control or some of these other controls in the active X category, which I've very rarely had to use. So it's like any topic, 10% of the product is what you're going to be using 90% of the time. And that's what I've attempted to cover. But there are some other important tips that I want to make sure we have mentioned. First of all, here's a text box with a calculation in it. And so the text box control is probably the most misnamed control because it can be bound to a number. It can be bound to a date. It can be bound to a text field. And in that case, the text box makes sense. But here we have a text box, and I'll prove it to you by opening up the property sheet. And it says text box bound to an expression. And expressions in Access always start with an equal sign, just like they do in Excel formulas. But field names are in square brackets. And when you're concatenating text to a field name, you use these ampersands. So this control is bound to an expression. It starts with an equal sign. We can see that in the control source property, as well as directly in the box itself concatenates the first name to a space to the last name so that as we go through these records we see their full name appear instead of only their first name or only their last name that is in these text boxes so these text boxes would be to modify their first and last name if I make it Jane Leverling then the calculation will automatically update so the text box is a wonderful control. It's misnamed because it can contain text, yes. It can also be bound to a number field, a date field, or a calculation. Another miscellaneous tip that I want to make sure we're clear on is on the other tab, the name property. The name property is the name of that control. Now, by default, it's going to be the field name. But in the case of this calculation, we gave it a unique name. And the reason why the name is so important is that when you open up the tab order dialog box, you will see those names of those controls listed here, and you can determine what order you want those controls to be in. Now look at this one, frame five. That's very generic, isn't it? I'm going to cancel the tab order, and here's the frame five control. It's this team option group. So I'm going to call it team option group give it a more meaningful name. And now when I go into the tab order dialog box, I see exactly what control is being referenced here. I can drag these boxes up and down to change the tab order because there's nothing more frustrating to a user to be using a form and to be bouncing all over the form. They want to bounce logically from control to control and work through that form. Another thing that I find really annoying with certain forms is when the controls are not aligned correctly. And you can spend a lot of time in design view moving those controls with this black four-headed arrow. When you grab, when you drag, you can spend a lot of time in design view really moving these controls around. Of course, when you point to the edge of a control and you get the black four-headed arrow, that means you're going to be dragging the control and it's accompanying label if it has one. When you point to a little square, you're going to be resizing that control in the direction of the arrows. And when you point to the upper left-hand corner, that big box, you'll be moving that one and only one control. But here's a couple tips to keep all your labels and text boxes aligned perfectly. And that is to drag a selection box, select all your controls, and go up here to the Arrange tab. Align right edges. Now these labels are razor sharp on their right edges. 
I'm going to do the same trick with these text boxes and this combo box. I've got them all selected right now with my selection box and do a line left edges. So now I know they're razor sharp and will be pleasing to the eyes. I do the same thing on reports, but typically on reports, you're aligning controls in a row, so you'll use the top and bottom alignment techniques instead of left and right. A couple of other miscellaneous tips that I use a lot is when I'm working on somebody else's database, the first thing I do when I come into that database is do a file, save as, and save a backup. That way, if I completely mess things up, I can go to that backup and all will not be lost. So be sure to make a backup of your database before you start doing some serious changes to it. My final tip is to use naming conventions. I like to prefix my lookup tables with LU. I like to make sure that all of my objects and my fields are named consistently. And I like to use field names that do not have spaces. This will help you later on with the syntax of expressions because field names with spaces require more syntax to use later on in expressions and in VBA code. A common naming convention is the Lazinski naming convention, and sometimes I'll go into a client's database and things have not been named properly. But whatever you do, you can name properly, maybe even prefix your queries with your initials so you know when you come back a week or a month or a year later to update that database, you know exactly what you've created Use good naming conventions. This will save you a world of frustration down the road. Naming conventions will save you a world of effort down the road. And last but not least, know that you can sort your objects by type, by name, by created date, modified date, all of these tips, knowing your navigation pane, help you find and work on the exact object that you need. Thank you.